Thank you, Jat. Here with Expecial, Dominate. You guys did it. I mean, it's it's as simple as that. I, I can't really say it any, any other way. You did it, you broke the curse. So, Dominate, I'm coming to you first. Forever fourth, it can't be said anymore. How does that feel? Uh, it feels great. Like, it's such just like a, like an annoying thought in the back of your head. Like, it's not something that you, that you really concentrate on all the time, but like, going into these games, it's like, damn, man, if I finish fourth, like, we're just gonna get it forever. So, it's nice that like, for history's sake, there's not going to be curse forever fourth. And a special, you have actually been on the flip side of that forever fourth curse for a long time in that you were playing on the teams that were pushing curse down. You were the teams that were beating them and getting third, second, first. You then join the roster. You kind of assume the responsibility of trying to break that curse, and you've done it too. So w tell me a little bit about your journey in coming into something like that where it's expected and trying to disavow that. I don't think we ever thought that we would just, oh, forward, for It's not something that we really keep in mind, but I unexpectedly feel a lot happier. Usually, you know, getting third place, fourth place, like, in the end, it doesn't matter too much, especially for spring. But after winning that game, just hearing everybody on, on the team say, yeah, we broke the curse, uh, screw the curse, you know, stuff like that. So I was I was happy, and I, I mean, we really wanted to get, you know, into the finals. Unfortunately, we didn't get there. But I think we're looking a lot stronger now, and we're definitely on the upswing. Well, you talk about wanting to have been in the finals and not quite getting there, but we must remind ourselves, it's the spring split, right? And when we look, if we go back to the beginning of this split, where you guys had a sub, then you were subbing in, subbing out, having some roster issues, and then you look at the fact that you finished third. It's actually quite impressive when you think about the fact that you have an, an entire split yet ahead of you to improve and fight for that championship spot. So, so Dominate, back to you. When you look on, when you look at it under that mic microscope, how do, how does that make you feel about the future of this roster going into the summer? Um, I think we have a lot of uh, confidence in each other now, which we necessarily didn't have before, or we didn't necessarily have before. Um, I think that just like when we're playing up there, we just believe we can win. We trust in our teammates, and we trust in each other's calls and abilities. So I think that that's like given us a, a huge. Um, just like, it's, it's been a huge breakthrough for us because before, you know, like one thing would go bad and then everyone would kind of just like play a solo key game. That was how it, how it felt. But now it's like, uh, if, if, if anything goes bad, we're all just focused on winning and seeing what we can do to help each other. And instead of it being like, okay, well, that lane's done. Like, I'm just gonna farm my lane. It's like, how can we help each other's lanes? How can we influence the map to make sure that, that um, no one snowballs out of control on the enemy team? All right, and then special. I want to turn to today's matchup specifically because you guys did come off of that reverse sweep, which has pained the team before. But today was so much of a back and forth best of five, right? Game for game for game for game. And you guys came out on top this time. So what was different from a mindset perspective in the team that allowed you guys to take the losses, roll with the punches, and come back even stronger game after game? Even when we got re a reverse re swept by Cloud9, we never felt like, oh, we're going to lose this game. We didn't feel like we we're, were going to get swept. And in this game, we were at the point where it was 2-1. We could have easily lost the, the fourth game and would have been game over. But we didn't think that. We were just like, all right, guys, let's play our best. You know, let's go there. We didn't even think about like, the fourth thing at all. We were just like, guys, let's just play our best. Let's do our best. And hopefully we win. All right, and then dominate. The series before, you had tweeted out how you pride yourself on being a clutch smiter and that you feel if you had gotten that one, maybe this Cloud9 series would have gone differently. Today, though, you came in huge with two steals and a secure against double smites, double smite consumes. Uh, you know, how, I mean, I, that's, I, I, there's no real question attached to that. I just kind of want to get your perspective on coming into this match and knowing that so much could hinge on a single play like that where you can secure your team to win and, and how you felt coming out of today, knowing that you you can claim yourself as a clutch smite. Um, I think it's just like, it's something that you always just want to be able to do in the moment. It's not. It's never something that you go into a series like, oh yeah, I just need to hit, like uh, I need to steal a Baron here. Like you never want the game to come down to a Baron steal. But if I'm in that situation, I pride myself on being able to like, stay focused, stay calm, like read the numbers and try to like actually get my smite in there at a good time. And uh, yeah, I think that just today I was able to like prove that I can like steal Barons and you should be afraid to go into 50-50 situations with me. Now on a somewhat uh, lighter note and non sequitur, it, w earlier in the split, um, Steve tweeted out, 
that he would take you guys all out to Hawaii if you finished higher, any, anywhere higher than fourth. Was that any extra motivation there for you guys to get a little free, get a little trip out of it, or, uh, or is that just kind of in the back of your minds? I don't think we even want to go to Hawaii. Yeah. No. <laughs> Most of us are just gonna like go back, um, maybe take like a couple of days. Like I know I'm gonna go on vacation with my girlfriend for like four or five days, and then just come back and start grinding. Like that's pretty much my goal. Right. Right. Back to the grindstone. So actually that. Mm -hmm. it, when we look forward to the next split, we've talked about how there is a lot of room for growth, but what are your guys' immediate plans when you do come back? Is it, you know, back to mechanics, back to solo queue, just keeping yourselves as individuals fresh and, and, and keeping your love for the game fresh? Or is it back to scrims and doing, you know, more team-oriented things where you talk about improving that communication and being able to support each other when things don't go perfectly in a game? I think a lot of it is now that we got the trust down, it's not going to go away. We're not going to all of a sudden be like, oh, Klaus, like, yes. <laughs> Back from vacation, I no longer trust Yeah, you. it doesn't work <laughs> that way. So, I mean, we're going to work on both solo queue and scrims, but, I mean, right now all I can think of is this, like, I want to go home. Let's just get some uh, downtime and just relax a bit. And this, this split has been really up and down, and it's, ha it's nice that we ended up the, game, uh, the split on a win, but then we need to, you know, get rid of some stress and then come back really strong for a summer split, which matters even more. Now, when this this split and this season in particular so far has had an incredible amount of diversity in champions. We've watched the tank meta develop, but even within that meta where we do see a lot a lot of tanky champions, the the pools within each role are rather large. We saw in this series specifically the bands change drastically between games. There were only two shared bands between the first two games, a couple shared bands between the second two games. What has that done for you guys as players and your development, knowing that there are far more playable options out there seemingly this season than in the past, and, and the way that you have to practice and prepare for these matches? Uh, I personally just think it comes down to meta. Like This meta in particular has a lot of more diversity because before it was pretty much bruiser junglers for like the last season and a half pretty much. So like you kind of have just like Lee Sin, Elise, Eve, and Kha'Zix as like the main champions and then you'd have like champions that would come in after that as like fillers. But now you have like the ability to play like Lee Sin, Rek'Sai, but you can also play tanks. So I think it just adds a lot of diversity into the, the pool. And I think it's kind of good for like um, some of us older players because we've just played a lot of, like more games on weird champions that might randomly become meta. So like for example, Nunu wasn't too good this season, but then when like the Juggernaut came in or uh, Cinder Hulk rather Cinder Hulk. Uh, came in, like it's one of my my favorite champions to play, and I really like feel like that's a power pick for me. So I mean, I think that the meta just kind of like favored uh, us in in that respect. All right. Well, you guys played phenomenally today. It was a really hard-fought series. I want to congratulate you again on snagging that third place, getting those championship points, and, and rolling into the summer split in a good position. Now, there were a ton of great plays today, but one player stood out and claimed our player of the series honor, and today it goes to the man sitting right over here, I Will Dominate. Now, he had multiple clutch plays at Baron, only dying twice in, his, in their wins and racking up a 21 and a half KDA over three games. Now, Dominate innovated his item build to support his team, particularly in the last game where he built Zeke's Herald to support their double AD comp. And that's actually something I kind of want to turn back to you towards because that's an item you see very rarely, yeah. if ever. And it actually, when it popped up, it kind of, I was standing next to Jad, it kind of caught us both, you know, off guard. But then immediately we were like, that makes perfect sense. On Nunu, it gives you 20% CDR, and then it gives you attack damage and lifesteal to your AD carries. It allows them to be a little bit uh, more aggressive in their positioning in fights. Was this something that was a, a gold amount that you came back with? Because it is cheaper than Frozen Heart, for example. But No, something that Piglet wanted, but I think that like our mentality into it was that we were going to go like AD Quirky and AD Illusion, but then we ended up going AP Quirky, so I don't even know if it was a good item to build <laughs> there anymore. But I was like already almost complete. Like, I have a Vam Scepter. Like, what am I going to do? Build a Hydra on Nunu? So I pretty much just had to go with the Zeke's at that point. And I, it was good for Piglet, and I mean, I'll take a little bit more attack damage, some Nunu slaps in there. So. Yeah, why not? Yeah, we saw we saw the second needlessly that our Drod come in for Quirky, and we're like, wait a second, that's <laughs> not an AD Corky. Anyway, Dominate, you've received this MVP honors. That's got to be a pretty solid seal to the, the spring split for you. Yeah, it, it feels really good. Um, I'm, it sucks that we couldn't go to the finals, but I'm, I'm happy that we were like able to do well in the series. And like, above the MVP, I'm just happy that we won.
All right, dude. Well, another day of action is in the history book, so let's pull up the bracket. There is only one thing left to be decided, and that's our North American Spring Split Champions. But we now have our third place team snapping the curse. It's Team Liquid, who won today 3-2. That means Team Impulse finishes in fourth place. In addition to ending the split with a huge win, Team Liquid have also claimed an additional 20 championship points. They will carry those points into the summer split, where they will play an important role in determining which teams have the honor of representing North America at Worlds. Now we'll be back tomorrow with another full day of league action as we crown our LCS champions. The day starts in Madrid where Fnatic will attempt to take back their EU championship title when they take on the rookie team Unicorns of Love. Then we'll bring the action back here to Los Angeles for Cloud9 versus defending champions Team Solo Mid. Our coverage begins at 8 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time, 5 p.m. Central European Summertime. Now remember to head over to lolesports.com today to reserve your spot at our upcoming midseason invitational from May 7th to May 10th. The best teams from around the world will descend on Tallahassee, Florida to fight in four days of epic matches. Click the tickets link for all the details. Now again, gentlemen, Congratulations on your victory today. Thank you so much for taking the time to join me on the desk before you greet all of the fans that have gathered here to, uh, to support you guys. And now for all of us here on the North American Broadcast Crew, thank you for watching, and we'll see you back here tomorrow for Championship Sunday.